In the teachings of the Vedas, they present different categories and types of mantra. Not all mantra is deeply spiritual. Some mantras were used to try and gain some material benefit. But because things were done in a manner that guided people towards a spiritual end, therefore they are considered sacred and important. And amongst all of the types of mantra, there is one that is absolutely unique. And it is called broadly Nama. Sometimes referred to as Sri Nama, sometimes as Hari Nama. This category of spiritual sound is so potent that it did not require a person to be in any state of spiritual purity or spiritual advancement or have any qualification whatsoever. One could be a drunkard lying in the street and still take this mantra and achieve the effect of it. Whereas in other types of mantra, one needed to gain qualification and purity and be able to, to um, experience the benefit. But with Sri Nama, one did not need any qualification. And even in the most fallen or somebody really going through a massive struggle can utilize this form of spiritual sound and attain the highest possible benefit. Have you heard the term plumbing the depths? It was like a term that was used in, in seafaring days. When a boat would begin to approach a shore, they would drop a line with a weight on the end of it and it'd have knots every fathom so that they could make sure that they're not going to run aground. So they're plumbing the depths. But this term, plumbing the depths, means looking for the extent of something. For one who would like to be on a spiritual sojourn, to find the highest spiritual truths, then one is encouraged to plumb the depths of Sri Nama, this form of spiritual sound. I don't know if anybody here has ever been scuba diving in the tropics on the, maybe the Great Barrier Reef or up in Asia, especially Southeast Asia. I mean, it's just extraordinary. You can go out in a boat and sit in the boat and gaze into the water and it's already like far out. Or you can hang your feet over the side and let them bathe in the warm tropical waters. Or you can get really adventurous and jump on in and paddle around and feel the beauty of that environment. Or why not go for it? put on a snorkel and actually dive. And going down underwater, you discover a unique world, a world that is so extraordinary and timeless and, and beautiful that you can actually end up spending hours and hours. You can get lost down there, just like the day goes by. It's such a wonderful experience. That example is actually not such a good example, but a little bit of an indicator of what it is to plumb the depths 
of this transcendental sound. The unique characteristic of this spiritual sound or Shri Nama is that it contains within it an entire spiritual world. It's not just a sound vibration, a feel good thing to kind of make me feel sort of mellow and relaxed and every, you know, the stress sort of leaves me, although that, that effect is there. That is a very minor side effect to a great and amazing transcendental world. This sound, unlike material, material sound, when you have a name for something like a mango, I mean, I can sit here and say mango, 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 mango. Let's get up our friend to start making a tune and we'll sing mango, mango, mango. And it kind of doesn't go anywhere. And after a while it becomes completely ridiculous. And it's like, what the hell am I doing? Because material sound represents something. It is not the thing itself. It represents. So the name mango represents another kind of experience, but it's a separate thing. And so the, the name sort of like points us in a direction, but it doesn't have any inherent sweetness or the qualities, the smell, the aroma, the texture, the taste of mango is not included in that sound. The spiritual sound is not like that. Spiritual sound is like a window into a, a unique and amazing spiritual dimension, a dimension where in order to enter, one must or one will experience self-realization. There will be a revelation of my true and deep spiritual identity, who I am apart from this body. That spiritual dimension is filled also with spiritual relationships. And the great relationship is with this divine personality who is known in Sanskrit as Paramatma, the Lord of one's heart. And so even though one may have zero qualification and, and in fact have a lot of disqualification and be, you know, very fallen, none of that, none of that gets in the way of someone being able to attain the highest spiritual experience. There are only two things that are needed. <coughs> One needs to cultivate the quality of humility, not just at the time of meditating or chanting these sacred sounds or sacred names, not just at that time, but in one's life, one should cultivate. And the reason, reason for this is because um, I, yesterday I was in Waihe, we were doing a one day event there and I was telling him about this thing I saw, it was on the news where there was a kid in, in a school in America and he had really severe color blindness to the point where he couldn't actually see any color. And his teacher, in that particular year, suffered from the same condition. And he had some of these really expensive, special glasses that when you put them on, it allows you to suddenly see color. And of course, somebody's capturing it on the phone as usual. And the teacher comes over and puts the glasses on the boy. He's about 11 or 12. And he looks around and immediately just bursts into tears because it's just like mind blowing for him. And then his classmates are encouraging him to look at this and there's like colorful posters on the wall and he's looking around and he's just like, he's absolutely mind blowing to now experience a world of color. The material condition means we suffer from a kind of a blindness, a spiritual blindness. 
And it is through this process of meditating on Sri Nama, the sacred names, that one can actually become alleviated of this condition. One of the things that really blocks our spiritual advancement is arrogance and pride. And to become humble in life is really essential in any spiritual endeavor. And the other one is to become what's described as tolerant. And there is this beautiful description of tolerance in this great um, epic spiritual text known as the Srimad Bhagavatam or the Bhagavat Purana. And it is stated that tolerance means to patiently endure unhappiness. The material world by nature contains much unhappiness. If we overly strive to make or find some perfection here, we will always be frustrated and deeply unhappy. But a person that is choosing to walk on a spiritual path, they learn that we must not be deterred. We, not, we, shouldn't, be, we shouldn't overreact, nor should we have unrealistic expectation of this world. It is what it is. Just kind of like suck it up and get on with stuff <laughs> and it will be fine. You will find happiness. You will be able to live a life of wonder, but it won't come from material experience. And so learning tolerance where we can focus instead on that, which is truly important, our own spiritual being and learning how to reconnect with this revelation of who I truly am within this body and mind, this spiritual being. And by engaging in this process, this meditative process, one will gradually be able to actually plumb the depths of this spiritual dimension and to experience the most amazing things the most wonderful spiritual revelation, it, the awakening of actual love, of a, m the most ecstatic form of spiritual love and spiritual experience. And it all lies within this spiritual sound. The spiritual sound is not just syllables. It's not just sound. It contains a whole spiritual dimension. It has enormous potency. And when we dive in, when we immerse ourselves in the spiritual sound, then gradually all the dust and cobwebs that are covering our heart and mind become cleared away. And we will be gifted with a spiritual vision to see another spiritual reality and spend increasingly more time in that wonderful um, that spiritual experience. Okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about tonight because we already had a really long cure time. Does that sound inviting or not? I tell you, it is, it is, it's impossible without beginning to enter that dimension and to have the spirit, awakening of the spiritual experience it, it's impossible to, to really talk about it in a meaningful way or to even speculate what that's like. It's not, about a, it's not a mental thing. It's, it's deeply experiential. So when one takes these sacred names, these holy names, it is like a child calling for its mother. It is actually a heart song. It is a cry of the living being to be back where I belong, to return to my actual home, to reconnect with all that is so beautiful and wonderful 
and deeply spiritual. And the process is, is the chanting of this Hari Nama, the Sri Nama. Okay? Good enough? Thank you. Thank you. So these guys gone into retirement or you're going to get a bit of support here? Hari Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari